Welcome back to Water Quality in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we are on our drinking water unit. Uh, this is the second lecture in our drinking water unit. Remember the components of the drinking water unit are the Safe Drinking Water Act, sources of drinking water in the Pacific Northwest, public perceptions of drinking water, drinking water contaminants, and drinking water uh, treatment. Today, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about public perceptions of drinking water. So today, uh, we're not going to be technical. We're just going to talk about what the public in the Pacific Northwest thinks about their drinking water. Um, so I'm going to show you a series of tables, and that gives you an overall impression of what the public think. The public at, public's attitude about drinking water quality in the Pacific Northwest is very important. Because when it comes to politics, perception is reality. The drinking water could be extremely safe, but if the public doesn't think so, the political reality is uh, we need to do something to improve our drinking water uh, a program. Uh, in 19, I've been involved in drinking water quality for a long time. In 1988, I began a long-term survey effort to understand uh, drinking water issues uh, in the Pacific Northwest. And when I talk about the Pacific Northwest, I'm talking about the states of Alaska, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. Uh, one thing that's important about the Pacific Northwest is this is a pretty urban area of the country. The population in the Pacific Northwest is well over 80% urban. So usually when we talk about surveys, we're talking about from a public perception. So uh, I'm going to show you some data about what the public think about the safety of their drinking water in their home. Residents have been very satisfied with their drinking water quality in their home uh, in the last 30 years. Our surveys have shown this. Urban residents tend to be less concerned about current drinking water quality in their home than rural residents. And that's because rural residents are more likely to be tied to private water systems. And remember, in private water systems, it's user beware. So the urban people, from a legal standpoint, shouldn't be worried about the quality of their drinking water because it should be safe as long as their community is following uh, the guidance of the Safe Drinking Water Act, the guidance of the Environmental Protection Agency on drinking water and the guidance of their state agencies on drinking water. So I'm going to talk about some survey data that I have to just show you what's happening, what people think about water, what do they think about what their water issues are. Now rural people, they tend to be Again, the goal of the Safe Drinking Water Act and our public water systems is to provide the public with drinking water that's of high quality and is safe at the tap in their home. So let's look at the first table. Uh, we asked the public, where do you get your drinking water from? Do you get your drinking water from a public supply system, a private system, or you don't know? If we look at the data in 2002, and again we're talking about the four Pacific Northwest states, about 61% of the public uh, believe they got their drinking water from a public source, 18% believe they got their drinking water from a private source, and 21% didn't know where they got their drinking water. Uh, the actual numbers in 2002 is probably 83% from a public supply, oh about 17% from a private supply. Basically, the people with private supplies knew that they got their drinking water from a private supply, but about 21% of the people that were getting their drinking water from a public system didn't know it was a public system. We move ahead and show the survey data, the same survey, the data from five years after 2002 and the data for 10 years after 2002. So if we take a look at public water systems, we see more and more people are, are acknowledging 
that they get, get their drinking water from a public system as we jump from 61% in 2002 to 64% in 2007 to 69% in 2012. The private water system uh, portion, uh, relatively le level, although uh, a few more people, a uh, higher percentage of people thought they got their drinking water from a private well. One thing that I think that's kind of nice here is the number of people that didn't know where they got their water supply system uh, fell in half, down to 10%. And if we go ahead to my last year of data, 2017, um, over 70% were saying they got their water from a public source, about 18% from a private source, and 11% didn't know. So you see some consistent numbers over this 15-year period. Um, the trends are that people are, know a little bit more about where they got their water. That's through public education. Uh, that's through uh, media. Uh, people have been cut, become more educated about their drinking water source here in the Pacific Northwest. So sim simple, simply, if we wanted to summarize, we could say that over two-thirds of the residents get their drinking water from a public water system. Between 10 and 20 percent of the residents have no idea about where their, what is their drinking water source. And the percentage of people getting their drinking water from a private source makes sense because the percentage is in line with the rural population, the rural proportion of the population. Next question we ask people over the years is, is your home drinking water safe? And this is from urban residents only. And we have the data from 2002, 2007, 2012, and 2017. Back in 2002, 92% of the urban residents were saying, yes, their drinking water, their home drinking water is from the tap, is safe to drink. 2007, 90%. 2012, 86%. Uh, 2017, 85 percent. The first thing I'd like you to realize from these numbers is well over eight out of ten people are saying that their tap water in their home is safe to drink. So there is overwhelming satisfaction with the safety of a person's drinking water. The second thing that I think that you can see from these numbers without uh, doing a big analysis is that the percentages of people saying that their water is safe to drink has dropped in the last uh, 15 years. Uh, the difference between 92% and 85% is statistically significant. So to put this data in a uh, summary form again is the vast majority of the public considers their home drinking water to be safe here in the Pacific Northwest. There has, however, been a statistical drop in the percentage of people believing that their home water is safe. So is this public education? Is this a public perception problem? We're not really sure. One thing that I wanted to say is there's no difference between uh, belief in the safety of drinking water and the state a person lives in. Uh, people in Idaho, Oregon, and Washington were just as likely to say that their water in their home was safe to drink. Some things that we did see some differences in, which I think are interesting, and this is if I take the 15-year uh, data and I pool it, I average it. If we look at demographics, people that say their drinking water is safe in the Pacific Northwest, there was a difference between genders. Males were more likely than females to say that their drinking water from their tap in their home was safe. Over 92% of males thought it was safe. 81% of females thought it was safe. Definitely a gender difference. Uh, females were a little bit more skeptical, but the thing that's important is here, over 8 out of 10 males and over 8 out of 10 females were saying their drinking water is safe to drink. Actually, 9 out of 10 males. Another demographic um, that I think that was interesting when we took uh, we take a look at, is your home drinking water safe to drink, is age. And if we look at the difference in age, this was a big survey. I mean, uh, there were 2,500 people that took part in this survey, in this statistical survey. Uh, so we didn't need 
big differences in percents to be statistically significant. 83% of people younger than 40 years old thought their drinking water is safe. 88% of people older than 40 years old thought their drinking water is safe. The conclusion is here is that older residents uh, thought there were more older residents thought their their home drinking water was safe to drink. Uh, even though there's a difference of uh, 4% here, it's statistically significant. That's why I had the stars there. And the other thing that I thought that was interesting from a demographic standpoint is the educational level of a person had an impact on whether they thought their drinking water is safe to drink. And uh, we break people into three categories. People that did not attend college, people that attended college for a period of time, uh, that could be anywhere from a community college, an associate's degree, to a few years of a four-year college. And then people with a college degree, we're talking about a bachelor's degree or more. And uh, if you look at the percentages, education level had a big influence on whether a person thought that water was safe to drink here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, people with college degrees, over 9 out of 10 people, 93% said yes, their drinking water was safe to drink at the tap. If the person had received some college ed education, 87% of them were saying yes, uh, their drinking water was safe to drink at the tap. And if the person had not attended college, 81% uh, of the people that did not attend college said they're safe, their drinking water is safe to drink. So at least 8 out of 10 people in each category said their drinking water is safe to drink. Uh, but there is a statistical difference. Uh, the more formal education a person has, the more likely they were to say that their drinking water was safe to drink. A couple other things. Um, let's look at bottled water for a few moments. We asked people what they thought about bottled water. And there are reasons, different reasons for people to use bottled water. If we take a look at the data over the 15-year period in 2002, 2007, 2012, and 2017, uh, we see uh, that there is a difference in the percentage of people that are actually using bottled water uh, for miscellaneous things. We're not saying that they use uh, the water in their home is 100% bottled. We're saying these are people that take bottled water with them. Uh, they use bottled water on a regular basis, but it's not a majority of their drinking water consumption. Back in 2002, 28.5% of residents of the region were saying, yes, they use bottled water. In 2007, 34.6% were saying, yes, they use bottled water. In 2012, that had fallen back to 26%, and in 2017, that had fallen a little bit further to 24%. What you see was a peak in bottled water use in 2017, and it's been declining since 2017. Now, there's many reasons for this. Bottled water's popularity in the United States and in the region has fallen, and it's reflected uh, in this survey. So let's uh, take a look at that data a little bit closer. Uh, the use of bottled water. Most people that use bottled water in the Pacific Northwest use it as a convenience rather than as a need. I use bottled water because it's convenient. But I don't need to because my drinking water, uh, my tap in my home is safe. Bottled water use is actually dropping. And there's reasons for that. There's been a lot of educational campaigns saying bottled water is a waste of money. It's a waste of resources. Uh, it's damaging to the environment. And uh, people that have, do not use bottled water in the Pacific Northwest said one of the reasons they don't use bottled water is because they're concerned about the plastic waste that is generated by the plastic bottles. So we have a little bit of data on this to, to show you what people think, why uh, reasons to use bottled water, and then why not to use bottled water. Uh, this data came from a survey that we took in 2015. We surveyed over 2,500 residents of the region. Uh, of the people that use drinking water, why did they use it? They, had, they could choose one reason. Two-thirds of the people said, they use bottled water because they believe it's safer than tap water. 
19% said it's more convenient. 10% uh, say they always have some bottled water on hand. It's a backup as safety. Uh, maybe they have a private well and uh, they have trouble with the pump. It goes out. Or they depend on electricity to run on the pump, run the pump. It goes out. So they have it as a backup for safety. And 4% of them didn't provide a reason why. So uh, the people that are using bottled water are saying, you know, it's, it's pretty safe. It's safer than tap water. And, you know, you've gone to the grocery store, you've gone to a convenience store, you've gone to uh, the big mega stores, and you see all sorts of bottled water on the shelves. Just some things we can see. Uh, smart water's all in a lot of stores. Fiji water uh, is in the stores. Um, I think Fiji water is kind of interesting because uh, Fiji water by itself has some problems. Um, a nonprofit... Um, uh, took samples of Fiji water, sent them, to a, sent them to a lab in Switzerland, had them analyzed, and they found out that Fiji water uh, is fairly high in arsenic. It's below the standard, which, me, which means it's safe, but it has more arsenic than most tap water in the United States. Why? Uh, Fiji advertises uh, that they're isolated. Uh, they don't get any acid rainfall. They have no pollutants. But the fact of the matter is the Fiji Islands have bedrock material that has some arsenic in it, and that arsenic has leached out into the aquifers from which they obtain the water to bottle. So from a heavy metal standpoint, Fiji water isn't the best thing, although the heavy metal levels in that water are very low. They're below the federal standard, so uh, it's considered safe. So what do people in the urban areas say uh, about problems using bottled water, reasons or what they think is the biggest uh, problem with bottled water. And uh, we compiled these in 2015, and I think they're really interesting to think about. Uh, the first and biggest problem is almost half the people are saying bottled water costs too much. If you uh, really take a look at bottled water, you see it's as expensive or more expensive than a gallon of gasoline. Then you have a third of the people saying the waste it generates, the plastic waste, is a very big problem. You have a group of people, 14%, that say it's not as safe as tap water. Tap water is safer than bottled water. 4% uh, of the people were saying uh, a lack of storage space. I have no place to store bottled water. Some people were saying, well, I can buy it, but I really can't keep it for 10 years. It has a limited shelf life. And then again, half a percent did not provide reasons. I think these are pretty good reasons uh, for saying um, the bottled water has some problems. Now let's take a look at the demographics uh, in bottled water use. I think that's some really interesting stuff. Uh, let's take a look at age and education level. Bottled water use, the percentage of people that use bottled water based on age. 33% uh, 34% of the people less than 40 years use bottled water, at least occasionally. 44% of the population in the Pacific Northwest aged between 40 and 50 use bottled water. And when you get above 50 years old, bottled water use is less. Uh, only 23% of the population uses it. I think these are some really interesting numbers. They're statistical differences that the big bottled water users are aged between 40 and 50. People older than 50 years old are less concerned about the safety of their regular use drinking water. So I think that's a really interesting demographic. And then again, if we look at educational level, uh, I think this is also interesting. The lowest bottled bottle water users are, are people with college degrees. Only 22% of them use bottled, bottled water occasionally or frequently. Uh, people with some college, uh, about a third of them use bottled water. And people with no college, a uh, little bit less, about 31%. So there is differences in educational level. These are all fascinating uh, because it has, a, it has a lot to do with what people think about bottled water convenience 
and what people hear about the safety of bottled water. Now, a lot of people say that their water in their home, particularly urban people, is safe to drink, but they may not be satisfied with the quality of drinking water. So people oftentimes buy an in-home water filter to supplement or improve the taste of their drinking water. And if we take a look at the years, 2002, 2007, 2012, 2017, and if we look at the percentage of people using a supplemental water filter, and we'll talk about the supplemental water filter a couple uh, lectures ahead. Uh, back in 2002, about 21% or 22% of the public uh, had an in-home filter that they were using in, in, in addition to their tap water. 26% uh, were using a water filter in 2007. In 2012, this had jumped to 34%. And in 2017, this had jumped to between 37 and 38 percent. So there is an increasing trend for people to have a supplemental water filter in their home to improve the drinking, their quality of their drinking water. It may be taste, it may be odor, it may be color. But already remember that the public is well aware that their drinking water is safe to drink because almost all, because well over 80 percent of them. Uh, are assured their water safe based on the Safe Drinking Water Act. Now, um, the reasons for this uh, could be many fold. I think one of the big reasons is there's so much advertising by water filter makers today. They're always on television, they're always on commercials. You can buy a cheap water filter, like a Brita water filter, uh, where you can just pour some of your tap water into the Brita filter, and people believe that that improves their water quality. You can buy a filter that you can screw on. Uh, to your faucet in your kitchen that will provide uh, some improvement in water taste, maybe reduce solids from your water. So Americans or uh, people in the Pacific uh, Northwest are buying into the fact that they can improve the quality of their drinking water further by buying a supplemental filter. And we'll talk about that in detail in a couple lectures. Let's take a look at the demographics as far as using water filters. Again, age makes a difference. Older people, people that are 50 and older, are much less likely to use an additional water filter in their house. Less than a quarter of the people. However, when you talk about being younger than 50, people age 40 to 50, almost 36% of them have bought and used a supplemental water filter in their home, and almost 32, almost over 32 percent of the people less than 40 years old uh, use a supplemental water filter. It seems that older people are more satisfied with their drinking water. They grew up drinking water. They didn't die from it. So as the science and uh, the entrepreneurs came out uh, supporting the use of water filters, they were less likely to pay attention. Let's take a look at community size, the size of a community a person lives in, and the likelihood that they're using a supplemental water filter. Uh, I think, first of all, uh, town size makes a big difference. The smaller the town, the more likely a person is using a supplemental water, water filter in their home. If a person comes from a community of less than 3,500, a lot of those people would have private water systems. Uh, over a third of them are using a supplemental water filter, whereas if a person lives in a big city such as Boise, Spokane, Seattle, Portland, Anchorage, uh, less than 20% are using filters. So the smaller commu size community, the more likely people are to actually purchase and use water filters. Now why do residents say they use water filters? Let's take a look at what urban residents in the region say. They use these supplemental water filters for different reasons, uh, and we add up to 100% here. 37% uh, says their water tastes better when they run it through a supplemental filter, such as a, something as simple as a Brita. 35% uh, of them say their water is safer by using a supplemental filter. 15% say it takes the smell out of the water. I can buy a, uh, a supplemental filter that's carbon-based, 
uh, carbon cartridge will pull some of that smell out. 15% say that. 8% uh, say their water is cleaner using a supplemental filter. And uh, a little bit less than 5% said they didn't provide a reason for that. Now, uh, there are seven or eight different major types of water filters in the home. Again, we will cover them in a couple lectures. Uh, we ask people what are problems with water filters. So if we take a look at three different types of filters by, by, that are used by urban residents. Again, this survey was done in 2015. Uh, and three types of filters. They had a pour-through filter, something like a Brita. Uh, a sink filter that's attached to the faucet on the sink, and then a heavy-duty system uh, that is probably under the sink or in another area of the home that produces a lot, filters a lot of water. People with uh, pour-through filters, they say the primary problem with them is they have a low water yield. It, this is for drinking water, for people that are going to drink glasses of water. Uh, it doesn't produce a lot of water. And their secondary problem with it is that they're always paying money to change their filter and they're having to change it often maybe once every two or three months so that's a continuous cost people that have filters that are built into their faucet on their sink their big problem with them it's in the way it's always there you can't really bypass it on the faucet and the secondary problem is they have to change the filter quite often and then if we take a look at a heavy-duty system, uh, it's very expensive. People can pay thousands of dollars for an in-house water filter system. It costs a lot to install, thousands of dollars, and then you have a high operating cost. So even though it sounds good, there are problems with it. A couple other things, water testing. Have you had your water tested in the last five years? Uh, we look at the year 2002, 2007, 2012, and 2017. Uh, we get about 20% of the people have had their water tested at least once in the last five years. More likely than not, uh, most of the people that had their water tested are living in smaller communities or more likely are using private wells. So water testing is not that big of a deal. What about contaminants? What are the most uh, cited contaminants by urban residents in their drinking water? Uh, the most cited contaminant uh, by urban residents is minerals. Uh, they say their water is hard, so they uh, you know, usually use water softeners. The second most cited drinking water contaminant are industrial chemicals. Now, again, people can't be very specific with these, but they believe that industrial chemicals is the second most likely contaminant. Third most likely contaminant cited by uh, urban residents was pathogens in their drinking water, uh, bacteria, protozoa. Fourth most often cited contaminant were nitrates. We'll talk a little bit about nitrates later on. And the fifth most cited uh, was pesticides. So these are the things that are on the radar of people in the Pacific Northwest as far as contaminants. Yep. The next issue is how urban residents improve drinking water. Again, we take a look at, I believe that my drinking water is safe to drink. Very high numbers, 92% back in 2002. It's fallen off to above 80%. Uh, I showed you a number a little earlier. It said 84%, 85%. It just depends on uh, the numbers that I actually use. So how have residents uh, decided to improve uh, their drinking water? Some people say, I improve drinking water by using a bottled water. Again, the numbers show that bottled water use was higher in 2007. It shot up, but it's been declining since. These are urban residents, not all residents, so the numbers are a little bit different than you saw earlier in the lecture. So you see bottled water use uh, 
is somewhat on the decline. That's one way residents have said that they've improved their drinking water. Uh, using home water filters. Urban residents, again, you can see that these numbers have steadily increased, going from about 21% in 2002 up to 42% in 2017. Problems with my drinking water. We asked people, we showed a list of contaminants and asked people to select one or two that they believed that they had trouble with in their drinking water or they were concerned about. These percentages are low. 13% of the public is concerned about organic chemicals. That means 87% aren't. 12% are concerned about microbial pathogens, uh, nitrates and phosphates, 6%, pesticides, 4%, lead, 3%. Lead's been in the news a lot, yet it's only 3%. Radionuclides, arsenic, mercury. Most of these, well over 90% of the public is saying, I'm not concerned about it, uh, particularly in my drinking water. So there isn't anything really specific out there that people are really leery of in their drinking water here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, one other category that I wanted to cover before the end of this lecture is why residents use water softeners. Uh, some people in the Pacific Northwest have hard water. People that have hard water, hard water causes some problems with some everyday home activities. So residents that use water softeners we asked them why, and we got a, a whole host of answers, and the answers were pretty good. 30% uh, uh, said it was better for bathing. Uh, it's better uh, when you soak yourself down in the bathtub or the shower. You get cleaner. 28% uh, said, or 29% said, it was better for washing clothes. You can get their clothes cleaner. 17% uh, said it was better for home pipes. Sorry, I misspelled home there. 14% um, said the water tastes better. 6% said it made the water safer to drink. And then 4% uh, provided no answer. First of all, all of these answers are good, except water softeners do not make water safer to drink. As a matter of fact, I would say uh, water softeners probably make water less safe to drink because a water softener replaces uh, some of the calcium and magnesium that was in the hard water with sodium. And a lot of people want to be on low sodium diets. But people have pretty good reasons why they uh, use water softeners. So I wanted to provide you with this data just to give you an overview of what the water drinking water issues here are in the Pacific Northwest. Overall, people don't have problems with water uh, drinking water quality here in the region. And then finally, I'd like to say that uh, these surveys were sponsored by the land-grant universities in the Pacific Northwest. The five land-grant universities in the Pacific Northwest came together to develop this survey that has been ongoing since 2002. Uh, the five land-grant universities in the Pacific Northwest include the University of Alaska uh, in uh, Fairbanks, uh, Washington State University in Pullman, Oregon State University in Corvallis, the University of Idaho in Moscow, and uh, a land-grant university uh, that serves primarily Native American residents uh, called Northwest Indian College, which is located in Bellingham, Washington. Thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. skeptical about drinking water because a much higher proportion of them are dependent on private water systems and uh, they're a minority of people in this survey so the vast majority of the numbers in the survey are coming from urban residents so uh, I've selected some tables that show how the public view drinking water in the Pacific Northwest or they think uh, drinking water is in the Pacific Northwest